Hanyang Hasu, and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host, Donald. Tonight we start our month of anti-drug propaganda with the police training film, The Narcotic Story. Before we get to that though, we have the next episode of Zoro's Black Whip. Last time, Vic was saved from hanging when the Black Whip delivered one of the real thieves. Vic then tried to take the bandit on a romantic carriage ride but was interrupted by the thief's cohorts. The driver got shot and Vic was knocked out, sending yet another carriage careening out of control. And now, the continuing demonstration of recycling in action, Episode 5 of Zoro's Black Whip, Take Off That Mask, which must be said by Zoro when he shows up. Welcome back. Tonight's feature is 1958's The Narcotic Story. A stern-voiced narrator describes events on screen in a far more threatening way than anything shown justifies. This was a police training film intended to prepare officers to interact with and arrest drug users, and it's kinda obvious the purpose of the film is to invent the idea of a threat. Everything is described in ultra-paranoid terms which justify any acts of violence the officer resorts to. The intended audience of these films isn't actually cops, but rather city councils and juries, the very groups asked to fund, justify, and forgive police budgets and violence. Rather than convince the viewer of a threat, you're supposed to be convinced that the cops believe it's a threat, which then justifies their violent fear-based response. By the way, the threat here is marijuana. You know, the non-addictive substance that makes people mellow and non-violent. Although a pothead may try to kill you by boring you to death by telling you all about their live fish collection. So, can you survive the threat of a droning narrator and charmless suburban teens? Find out in tonight's film, The Narcotic Story. The marijuana addict is a sad and depraved figure. From the moment they wake up, their life is reduced to the unrelenting obsession of getting their next fix. Even their home, a disgusting hovel unfit for vermin, is but a resource to strip and sell for scrap to fund the next hit. The mind of the addict is fundamentally paranoid, perverse, and criminal. Communications must always be kept secret, for you never know who is listening, and the addict must constantly hide both their money and their stash lest the authorities find it. Celebrations with friends are just preludes to the next crash, and gifts of marijuana from the addict are merely a ploy to shackle more people to a life of servitude and prostitution. And the psychosis induced by the drug can make the addict believe they're hearing voices criticizing and mischaracterizing their behavior. The unrelenting vanity and ego of the addict to imagine that their pathetic lives would warrant the attention, let alone immortalization, that being narrated by a figure as a scene as myself. That was tonight's feature, The Narcotic Story, and wow, I've never seen an anti-drug film with detailed instructions on how to cook and shoot heroin. I wonder what we'll learn in next week's feature. An alien is given a crash course on humans and sent to Earth where he quickly infiltrates the population. But people start to figure out his identity. I'm not what you think I am. He'll use every trick he can to complete his mission, from bribery to hypnotism to seduction. Oh, we seem to miss all the fun. We'll have to change all that. Will his dastardly plan come to fruition? See David Byrne as the assassin of youth next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. We'll get that elephant of yours working and... See if you can remember that you have a date with me tonight. More? Of course there's more! A pusher never stops at just one. As always, consomni done. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky.